Good morning on this Thursday in the second week after Pentecost and the commemoration of Evelyn Underhill. This is morning prayer brought to you by the Episcopal Church of the Atonement in Chicago, Illinois. I'm Brother Ron Fox. I'm substituting for Cena today, who is having cataract surgery this morning. So we will remember certainly Cena at the prayers, but remember her throughout the day for a successful uh, cataract surgery and a quick recovery. The hagiography on Evelyn Underhill is quite long, but uh, she's quite an important mystic. And I want to tell you a bit about her before we begin. The only child of a prominent barrister and his wife, Evelyn Underhill, was born in Wolverhampton, England on December 6, 1875, and grew up in London. She was educated there and in a girls' school in Folkestone, where she was confirmed in the Church of England. She had little other formal religious training, but her spiritual curiosity was natural, lively, naturally lively, and she read widely, developing quite early a deep appreciation for mysticism. At 16, she began a lifelong devotion to writing. In the 1890s, Evelyn began annual visits to the European continent, and especially to Italy. There she became influenced by the paintings of the Italian masters and by the Roman Catholic Church. She spent nearly 15 years wrestling painfully with the idea of converting to Roman Catholicism, but in the end, she discerned that she was called to remain an Anglican. In 1921, Evelyn Underhill became reconciled to her Anglican roots while remaining what she called the Catholic Christian. She continued with her life of reading, writing, meditation, and prayer. She had already published her first great spiritual work, Mysticism. This was followed by many other books, culminating her most widely read and studied book, Worship, in 1937. Evelyn Underhill's writings proved appealing to many, resulting in a large international circle of friends and dis disciples, making her much in demand as a lecturer and retreat director. She died at age 65 in June on June 15, 1941. The Lord is glorified in his holy ones. Come, let us adore him. For morning prayer, those of you who use the Book of Common Prayer, morning prayer begins as usual on page 80, followed by the Venite on page 82. The Psalms today are 75, 76, and 77, beginning on 691, and the canticles are 8 and 20 on 85 and 94. It's our tradition and custom here at Church of the Atonement to light a candle, regardless of where we may be, signifying the presence of God in our midst. Mine is already lit. If that is your practice, I invite you to do the same. We'll take just a moment and begin with morning prayer on this Thursday in the second week after Pentecost in the commemoration of Evelyn Underhill. The Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silence before him. Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. The earth is the Lord's, for he made it. Come, let us adore him. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great king above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his for he made it and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee and kneel before the Lord our maker. For we are, <clears throat> excuse me, for he is our God and <clears throat> we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. The earth is the Lord's, for he made it. Come, let us adore him. Psalms 75, 76, and 77, beginning on page 691. We give you thanks, O God, we give you thanks. Calling upon your name and declaring all your wonderful deeds. I will appoint a time, says God. I will judge with equity. Though the earth and all its inhabitants are quaking, I will make its pillars fast. I will say to the boasters, boast no more. 
and to the wicked, do not toss your horns. Do not toss your horns so high, nor speak with a proud neck. For judgment is neither from the east nor from the west, nor yet from the wilderness or the mountains. It is God who judges. He puts down one and lifts up another. For in the Lord's hand there is a cup full of spice and foaming wine, which he pours out. And all the wicked of the earth shall drink and drain the dregs. But I will rejoice forever. I will sing praises to the God of Jacob. He shall break off all the horns of the wicked. But the horns of the righteous shall be exalted. In Judah is God known. His name is great in Israel. As Salem is his tabernacle. And his dwelling is in Zion. There he broke the flashing arrows, the shield, the sword, and the weapons of battle. How glorious you are, more splendid than the everlasting mountains. The strong of heart have been despoiled, they sink into sleep. None of the warriors can lift a hand. At your rebuke, O God of Jacob, both horse and rider lie stunned. What terror you inspire. Who can stand before you when you are angry? From heaven you pronounce judgment. The earth was afraid and was still. When God rose up to judgment and to save all the oppressed of the earth, truly wrathful Edom will give you thanks and the remnant of Hamath will keep your feasts. Make a vow to the Lord your God and keep it. Let all around him bring gifts to him who is worthy to be feared. He breaks the spirit of princes and strikes terror in the kings of the earth. I will cry aloud to God. I will cry aloud and he will hear me. In the day of my trouble, I sought the Lord. My hands were stretched out by night and did not tire. I refused to be comforted. I think of God, I am restless. I ponder and my spirit faints. You will not let my eyelids close. I am troubled and I cannot speak. I consider the days of old. I remember the years long past. I commune with my heart in the night. I ponder and search my mind. Will the Lord cast me off forever? Will he no more show his favor? Has his loving kindness come to an end forever? Has his promise failed forevermore? Has God forgotten to be gracious? Has he in his anger withheld his compassion? And I said, my grief is this. Grief is in response to the right hand of the Most High has lost his power. Just a moment. Okay, my goodness, now I got lost. I will remember the works of the Lord and call to mind your wonders of old time. I will meditate on all your acts and ponder your mighty deeds. Your way, O oh God, is holy. Who is so great a God is our God. You are the God who does wonders and have declared your power among the peoples. By your strength you have redeemed your people, the children of Jacob and Joseph. The waters saw you, O God, the waters saw you and trembled. 
the very depths were shaken. The clouds poured out water, the skies thundered. Your arrows flashed to and fro. The sound of your thunder was in the whirlwind, your lightnings lit up the world. The earth trembled and shook. Your way was in the sea and your paths in the great waters. Yet your footsteps were not seen. You led your people like a flock by the hand of Moses and Aaron. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the book of Ecclesiasticus. Abraham was the great father of a multitude of nations, and no one has been found like him in glory. He kept the law of the Most High and entered into a covenant with him. He certified the covenant in his flesh, and when he was tested, he proved faithful. Therefore, the Lord assured him with an oath that the nations would be blessed through his offspring, that he would make him as numerous as the dust of the earth and exalt his offspring like the stars and give them an inheritance from sea to sea and from the Euphrates to the ends of the earth. To Isaac also he gave the same assurance for the sake of his father Abraham. The blessing of all people in the covenant he made to rest on the head of Jacob. He acknowledged him with his blessings and gave him his inheritance. He divided his portions and distributed them among twelve tribes. From his descendants the Lord brought forth a godly man who found favor in the sight of all and was beloved by God and people, Moses, whose memory is blessed. He made him equal in glory to the holy ones, and made him great to the terror of his enemies. By his words he performed swift miracles. The Lord glorified him in the presence of kings. He gave him commandments for his people and revealed to him his glory. For his faithfulness and meekness he consecrated him, choosing him out of all humankind. He allowed him to hear his voice and led him into the dark cloud and gave him the commandments face to face, the law of life and knowledge, so that he might teach Jacob the covenant and Israel his decrees. Here ends the reading. The Song of Moses, Canticle 8, on page 85. I will sing to the Lord, for he is lofty and uplifted. The horse and his rider has he hurled into the sea. The Lord is my strength and my refuge. The Lord has become my savior. This is my God, and I will praise him, the God of my people, and I will exalt him. The Lord is a mighty warrior. Yahweh is his name. The chariots of Pharaoh and his army has he hurled into the sea. The finest of those who bear armor have been drowned in the Red Sea. The fathomless deep has overwhelmed them. They sank into the depths like a stone. Your right hand, O Lord, is glorious in might. Your right hand, O Lord, has overthrown the enemy. Who can be compared with you, O Lord, among the gods? Who is like you, glorious in holiness, awesome in renown, and worker of wonders? You stretch forth your right hand, the earth swallowed them up. With your constant love you led the people you redeemed. With your might you brought them in safety to your holy dwelling. You will bring them in and plant them on the mount of your possession. The resting place you have made for yourself, O Lord, the sanctuary, O Lord, that your hand has established, the Lord shall reign forever and forever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the second letter of Paul to the Corinthians. It is necessary to boast. Nothing is to be gained by it, but I will go on to visions and revelations of the Lord. I know a person in Christ who 14 years ago was caught up to the third heaven. Whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know. God knows. And I know that such a person, whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know. God knows. Was caught up into paradise and heard things that are not to be told, that no mortal is permitted to repeat. On behalf of such a one, I will boast. But on my own behalf, I will not boast except of my weaknesses. But if I wish to boast, I will not be a fool, for I will be, I will be speaking the truth. 
but I refrain from it, so that no one may think better of me than what is seen in me or heard from me, even considering the exceptional character of the revelations. Therefore, to keep me from being too elated, a thorn was given me in the flesh, a messenger of Satan to torment me, to keep me from being too elated. Three times I appealed to the Lord about this, that it would leave me, but he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for power is made perfect in weakness. So I will boast all the more gladly of my weaknesses, so that the power of Christ may dwell in me. Therefore, I am content with weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecutions, and calamities for the sake of Christ. For whenever I am weak, then I am strong. Here ends the reading. The Gloria, Canticle 20, on page 94. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Apostles' Creed on page 96, followed by the Lord's Prayer and Suffrages A on page 97. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world, for only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. O God, origin, sustainer, and end of all creators, creatures, grant that your church, taught by your servant Evelyn Underhill, may continually offer to you all glory and thanksgiving, and attain with your saints to the blessed hope of everlasting life, which you have promised us by our Savior, Jesus Christ, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God, now and forever. Amen. Heavenly Father, in you we live and move and have our being. We humbly pray you so to guide and govern us by your Holy Spirit, that all the cares and occupations of our life we may not forget you, but may remember that we are ever walking in your sight, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of your faithful people is governed and sanctified, receive our supplications and prayers which we offer before you for all members of your holy church, that in their vocation and ministry they may truly and devoutly serve you through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. We now come to the prayers on behalf of the Episcopal Church of the Atonement and the wider church and invite you to offer whatever prayers, petitions, and thanksgivings you may have, either silently or aloud, wherever you may be. If you have a particular prayer request, you may put it in the comments section of this broadcast. I will do my best to get to it through the course of the prayers which are about to follow. 
And during this week of June 11th, we pray for the healing and comfort of those for whom we now offer our prayers. For the sick, Graham, Mark, Eli, Destiny, Kay, Ron B, Jerry C, Brad, Phyllis, Mary, Killian, Rita, Dennis, Maureen, Mary, Tom R, Ed, Father Rosa, Susan T, former President Carter, Mother Gustalides, Mary, Marilyn, Patrick, Jean, Ralph, Lori, Gretchen, Brenda T, Barbara, Deacon Ken, Presiding Bishop Curry, John, Manny, Chris, Pope Francis, Greg, Elvira, Nancy, and all with COVID-19. For Sina, who's having cataract surgery this morning, and for Bill, who's having a medical procedure. For those needing special prayers, the families of those hospitalized are in nursing homes, especially Elizabeth, for all who mourn, especially Ginger and the Kennedy family, for all victims of gun violence, for the unemployed and for those seeking work, for the people of Ukraine, South Sudan, Turkey, Israel, Gaza, the West Bank, and Syria, and with thanks for the work of Care for Friends and Care for Real. For all healthcare workers, especially Joseph Basil, Jackie, Gary, Will, Choi, Erica K, Larry, Kieran, Lee, Carrie, Anthony, William, Eric, Lisa, Thomas, and Emily, for all families and children in this city and state, for all expectant parents, and for all prisoners, especially Oscar Roy, Jorge, and Mingo. For members of our military services on active duty, Andre, Ricky, Owen, Max, Celeste, and Nate, for Paula, our bishop, Dan, our interim rector, and for the work of our vestry and search committee. For the birthdays of Father Ethan Jewett, Carol Trapp, Father Gary Lawler, Nicholas Chalice, Janine Singleton, Phyllis Robb, Enar Al Nasir, Father Dan Puhala, Antoinette Weatherspoon, and Matthew McGarvey. For the wedding anniversaries of Robert Dobrinsky and Ronald Fotopoulos, Kevin Simcox and Carolyn Neal, Jane and William Lucas, and Sina Lightbold and Charles Stewart. For the diaconal ordination anniversaries of Father Thomas C.H. Scott, Father Ted Durst, Father Gary Lawler, and Father Adam Spencer. And for the priestly ordination anniversaries of Father Spencer and Father Scott Zaucha. And we pray for the departed, remembering Patrick Kennedy, Cormac McCarthy, Treat Williams, Virginia Chandler, George Winston, all who have died of gun violence, and all who have died of COVID-19. And at the anniversaries of their deaths for Norma Aranda, Denver Charles Davis, Robert Edward, Robert Everett Branham, Brent and Marcy Cameron, Richard Blonde, John Jensen, Eleanor Dahmer, John Toman, Father Roy Waywell, and William Lytle. And we offer this prayer for the people of Ukraine. Lord of all the earth, be present with the people of Ukraine at this time of danger, fear, and conflict. Grant that wise and peaceable counsels may yet prevail. And give to all suffering nations the freedom they desire and deserve. We ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And that prayer is from St. Matthew's in Westminster. May these and all our intercessions be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. The General Thanksgiving on page 101. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. Excuse me. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace, and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service, and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. That concludes morning prayer on this Thursday in the second week after Pentecost and the commemoration today of Evelyn Underhill. We thank you for being with us. We're here every morning at 8.30 a.m. on Google Meet for morning prayer. Since it is Thursday, there's a Mass today at noon, Mass tomorrow morning at 7.30.
Saturday, we have the rosary at 9.30, followed by the healing mass at 10. And on Sunday, our usual round of services at 8, 9, and 11, with the 11 being broadcast live on YouTube. That can be watched live at the time or some later time at your convenience. Again, thanks for being here with us this morning. Have yourself a great Friday. It's supposed to get kind of warm today and then cool off suddenly. So we'll see what happens. Have a great day, everyone. God bless.